Abbey Road Studios is probably one of the most recognizable names in the music industry. It's been around since 1931, when it opened as the recording facility for the EMI record label, and it's been used for countless recordings ever since, in all genres of music, from classical to jazz to pop to rock, and additionally, in the current era, for film scores and even game music. But if you were to ask a lot of musicians and engineers what was the heyday of Abbey Road, they'd probably say the period from the early mid-60s through the 70s, when the studio turned out now classic recordings from Pink Floyd, The Hollies, The Zombies, and other classic rock acts. But the artists most closely associated with Abbey Road were, of course, the Beatles, who recorded and produced the majority of their output in Abbey Road Studio 2, not to mention naming their last album after the facility. But it wasn't just the success of the Beatles that earned Abbey Road its place in recording history, it was the way those records were made. Up to that time, recording was a simple, straightforward business, capturing the artist's performances as cleanly and accurately as possible, with the recording process and the tools employed as linear and transparent as the technology of the day could muster. But this was the era of analog circuitry and mechanical recording devices, all of which were anything but transparent. And the various nonlinearities they introduced came to define the sound of modern pop recordings. Add to that the Beatles' desire to push that technology up to and past its limits, always in search of new sounds and fresh effects, and they, along with producer George Martin and a host of some of the best and most creative engineers in the business, set about reinventing the art of recording, breaking all the rules and, in the process, coming up with many of the techniques and effects that we all use and take for granted nowadays. Of course, now, in the digital era, we enjoy an almost unlimited flexibility with our DAW-based studios we've got a plug-in for just about any effect you could want. But even with all this, many artists, producers, and engineers still look back to the classic tools of that era, like analog consoles and magnetic tape recorders, and the traditional methods for generating effects, because they've noticed that the sounds and effects on the albums of that period often have a richer, more lively quality than many modern productions. And they realize that those qualities have a lot to do with the imperfections and limitations of the vintage analog hardware in use at the time. While there are a lot of plugins and processors that emulate those general qualities, the warmth and presence of older gear, Waves has gone a step further for this collection. They set out to capture not only the kind of desirable sound quality that equipment of this sort contributes to recording, but the specific qualities of the actual pieces of gear that help define the sound of modern pop records. The plugins in the Abbey Road collection model, in exquisite detail, both the sound and operation of some of the most iconic recording equipment ever used. They've recreated the classic consoles used at Abbey Road in the 60s, the Red 17 and the Red 37 and 51 consoles, which captured and gave voice to so many classic Beatles tracks. They've nailed the sound of the Studer J37 four-track recorder of Sgt. Pepper fame, along with all its quirks and idiosyncrasies, some of which were utilized to create classic effects. They've meticulously recreated the passive RS-56 EQ, one of those kind of EQs that, thanks to its design, can add some analog magic just by passing signals through it. And they've carefully recreated one of the most classic effects of all, the tape-based ADT effect, artificial double tracking, that's used on so many Beatles tracks. This is an effect that's so immediately identifiable on those recordings that even now it has experienced engineers saying to themselves, okay, I know basically how they did it, but how'd they get that specific sound? Well, the specific method they used is now offered in the real ADT plugin, and if you use it well, you really can get that classic ADT quality, along with many other classic tape effects like flanging and phasing. Finally, to wrap up the collection, Waves modeled three specialty microphones from the Abbey Road mic locker for use on tracks where the unique character might bring a little something extra to the mix. In this course, naturally, I'm going to go over each of the plugins in detail, their layouts and controls, and provide examples and demos of their use. But I'll also provide a little background on the gear and its applications on classic recordings as well. Now, I know a lot of you who are interested in plugins like these probably already have a fair bit of experience recording and mixing and are at that stage where you're looking for something extra to go beyond the typical DAW tools. But I'm sure there are also plenty of people who know the Abbey Road name and are wondering just what kind of something extra tools like this, with their simulations of analog equipment, can bring to the table. So I will go over a little bit of background on analog sound as well, 
what it is, where it comes from, and what makes it so desirable. So, for those who might be curious, I'll start off with that, a brief primer on just what's so special about analog sound. 